professor of media, culture, and communication at New York University. And uh, there have been calls for his removal because in a class about propaganda, which he teaches, and tell me, professor, if I have it right, in summarizing what you did, you mentioned that there were studies, many studies, that showed that masks might not be quite as effective or at, at all effective and that th this might be construed, the push for masks, as a form of propaganda. Is that correct? Well, of course it is. I mean, it would be, it, it would be accurate to call it propaganda, even if it were completely true. Right, benign. exactly. In, yes, in there's, words, there's true propaganda. That's right. Even though we tend yeah. to use it in the pejorative sense. That, that, that's right. Yes, that, that is correct. Yeah. So, so one um, student, this is, uh, look, I kept quiet the entire uh, time because it was riveting, and I wanted everyone to hear your story and obviously more, but I just want to note some of my, of my reactions. The fact that one student, one radical student, can, through one tweet or a couple of tweets, cause this much damage shows one the fragility of decency at our universities. Th this tweet, this tweeting radical should have been ignored. Right. She should have been ignored. Or, you know, at most, the, my chair, if he felt compelled to tweet back, he should have said, thank you for your input, right? Right. Have a great but, day. Have a great yeah, day. Good luck to you. Uh, no, no, no. I, Dennis, I actually think that this was... Um, an opportunity that my colleague seized with the approval, tacit or explicit, of NYU itself. So let, let me just answer your question, the one you asked before the break. Uh, I, you know, they accused me of explicit hate speech. I was raising questions about transgender ideology. I noted, I wrote a short piece for my listserv, which your listeners can join just by going to markcrispinmiller.com. Four paragraphs on a Sprite commercial that featured a mother breast-binding her daughter. I asked why the Coca-Cola company, which owns Sprite, which is a, a notorious corporate felon, would be celebrating transgenderism, you know, to sell a soft drink. It can't be that there's a huge transgender market for Sprite, right? And I speculated in this piece that it probably has something to do with a eugenics agenda, a depopulation agenda, which I've actually studied in depth, the whole historical move toward that kind of so-called population control. Uh, so they regarded that as hate speech. Well, I don't, fo I, I don't follow that. How does that lead to eugenics? Well, because um, this is a complicated history, but... You know, eugenics was a big movement in the first half of the yes, 20th century. Yes, I'm very well aware. Justice right. Brandeis even voted for it. Well, yes, uh, very popular with, you know, the um, intelligentsia and so on. And it had to go underground briefly after the Holocaust because the eugenics enthusiasts had been celebrating Hitler's uh, rise to power because they said this is finally a head of state who understands our philosophy. Right, who was getting rid of the uh, the ill and, and, I'm sorry, what was the word you were using? The unfit. The unfit, that's right, yes. That was Margaret Sanger's word for right, it. The unfit, she was a, a rabid eugenicist, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it, it reemerged in the early 50s uh, with the founding of the Population Council. This is 1952. That was Rockefeller money. And the Rockefellers have always been, you know, big, big enthusiasts for this kind of thing. And so is Bill Gates, okay? Gates has said, he said in 2010, that he'd like to see the global population reduced by 10 to 15 percent. I think he really wants it to be reduced by far more, you know, as Ted Turner, who is a, you know, an ally of his, has been very explicit in saying the population should be reduced by up to 95%. Yeah, this Ted Turner who, said he regrets having as many children as he had. Uh, yeah, that I don't believe, because these people are free to procreate, you know, like rabbits. Right. I mean, da David right. Rockefeller had five children also. Right. And what I'm saying is that I, I there's a strong um, uh, eugenicist uh, 
this kind of a eugenicist. Uh, right, but I don't understand the connection between the pro-transgender crowd and eugenics. Because uh, if you encourage that kind of mutilation, I'm talking about you know surgery, transition surgery, and subject children to regimens of uh, puberty blockers and hormones, which is also incidentally very profitable for big pharma. You are you are sterilizing them. You know you are you are giving them. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Mean? That's that's medically accurate. It is medically accurate. That's right. Okay. I, so you said this, and now NYU has accused you not only of debunking masks, but of hate speech. Yeah, and let me add, Dennis, that I also uh, you know strongly questioned allowing biological males to compete in girls' and women's athletics. Right. You know, I consider myself a sane feminist, and on feminist grounds, that is simply wrong. Right. Okay? But none of, the feminist, trying... none of the feminist organizations agree with you. Well, you know, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, I find right. myself asking, uh, let me say, where are all the women who say my body, my choice, right, when we're being subjected to a mandatory experimental vaccination program, you know? Very few people. All right. So uh, you have a you have a big flaw, my friend. What's that? No, no. You have common sense and you search for truth. That immediately renders you an outlier at any university in this country, NYU in particular. I'm going to come back to you. And ladies and gentlemen, let me give the uh, the Prager Courage Award to this man. Courage is my favorite trait in the human species, and this man has earned it.